something drove the builders of the Great Pyramid to go to a very great additional trouble, not only to create this massive imposing monument, but also to lock it on to True North, and then other things, to incorporate into its dimensions the dimensions of our planet. The Serapium of Saqqara is located in the vast Saqqara necropolis, an ancient burial ground about 30 kilometers south of modern-day Cairo, Egypt. This necropolis is renowned for its numerous pyramids, most notably the famous Steppe Pyramid of Djoser. The Serapium itself is situated within this expansive complex, specifically nestled in the desert sands to the west of the Pyramid of Djoser. This location is significant due to its proximity to these monumental structures, adding to the historical and cultural richness of the area. The discovery of the Serapium in 1851 is a fascinating story. It was unearthed by the French Egyptologist Auguste Mariette, who originally traveled to Egypt with the intent of collecting Coptic manuscripts for the Louvre. However, he quickly became captivated by the country's ancient monuments. Mariette's discovery of the Serapium was rather serendipitous. While exploring the area, he noticed the head of a sphinx protruding from the sand. Intrigued, he began excavating and soon uncovered an entire avenue of sphinxes that led to the underground galleries of the Serapium. The Serapium of Saqqara stands as an architectural wonder, nestled within the vast Saqqara necropolis, approximately 30 kilometers south of modern-day Cairo. This ancient burial ground is famous for its numerous pyramids, including the renowned Steppe Pyramid of Djoser. The Serapium itself is situated in the desert sands to the west of this iconic pyramid, designed to house the sacred Apis bulls, revered as manifestations of the god Ptah and later Osiris Apis, the Serapium consists of an extensive network of underground tunnels and burial chambers. Marking the entrance to the Serapium is a long avenue lined with Sphinx statues, similar in style to those found in Luxor's Avenue of Sphinxes. These Sphinxes, believed to have been added during the Ptolemaic period, reflect the blend of Greek and Egyptian cultures. Entering the Serapium, one would pass through what was once a grand entrance secured by massive stone doors, now removed or destroyed. This entrance demonstrates the Egyptians' ability to manipulate large stone blocks with precision. The removal of these doors has left the tunnels exposed to the elements, making conservation efforts crucial for preserving this historic site. The underground galleries of the Serapium are its most striking and extensive feature. These galleries, arranged in a rectangular layout with side chambers cut into the rock, extend for several hundred meters. Each side chamber was meticulously designed to house a sarcophagus, reflecting the site's importance through its methodical precision. Hewn from solid limestone bedrock, these galleries showcase immense engineering skill, especially considering the limited tools available at the time. Originally lit by oil lamps or torches, the dim lighting within these galleries adds to their mysterious ambience. Among the most impressive aspects of the Serapium are the massive sarcophagi housed within its chambers. Each sarcophagus carved from a single block of stone such as granite, basalt or limestone is a marvel of ancient craftsmanship. Some weigh over 70 tons and measure up to 4 meters in length, raising questions about how these enormous stones were transported and positioned within the narrow confines of the underground chambers. The precision of their craftsmanship with smooth surfaces and accurate dimensions is comparable to that seen in the construction of the Great Pyramid of Giza, indicating a continuity of advanced engineering skills over centuries. The walls of the Serapium are richly adorned with hieroglyphic inscriptions and carvings, detailing the burial rites of the Apis bulls and the religious rituals associated with their worship. These inscriptions also mention the pharaohs who ordered the construction of the galleries and the burial of the bulls, providing valuable historical context. The decorations include depictions of gods and goddesses, scenes of offerings and symbolic motifs like the Ankh, symbolizing life and the Jed pillar, symbolizing stability. An interesting comparison can be made between the Serapium of Saqqara and the Catacombs of Rome. Both are extensive underground burial complexes, but while the Serapium was dedicated to the sacred bulls, the catacombs were used for human burials primarily by early Christians. The construction and transportation of the massive sarcophagi in the Serapium have long intrigued historians and archaeologists. Several theories have been proposed to explain these feats. 
One widely accepted theory is that the ancient Egyptians used a system of ramps to transport the massive stone blocks from quarries to the construction site. These ramps could have been straight, zigzagging or spiral, depending on the terrain and the specific requirements of the project. Another theory suggests that the stones were moved using wooden rollers and sledges. Workers would place the stone blocks on sledges and drag them over a series of logs, lubricated with water or oil to reduce friction. This method is supported by depictions in ancient Egyptian art, showing workers transporting large statues and blocks in this manner. Some researchers believe that lever and pulley systems might have been used to lift and position the sarcophagi within the underground chambers. Though no direct evidence of such devices has been found, the concept aligns with the known mechanical ingenuity of the ancient Egyptians. The most straightforward explanation involves sheer human labor. Teams of workers, possibly numbering in the hundreds, could have coordinated their efforts to move the stones using ropes, sledges, and manual force. Another fascinating structure near the Serapium is the Steppe Pyramid of Djoser, an architectural marvel located in the Saqqara necropolis, about 30 kilometers south of modern-day Cairo. Saqqara served as the burial ground for the ancient city of Memphis, the capital of Egypt during the Old Kingdom. The pyramid stands prominently within this vast necropolis, surrounded by numerous tombs and other pyramids, making it a central feature of the area. The Steppe Pyramid of Djoser was rediscovered in the 19th century by European explorers. However, it was the French Egyptologist Jean-Philippe Lauer who carried out systematic excavation and study beginning in the 1920s. Lauer's extensive research and restoration efforts over several decades significantly enhanced our understanding of the pyramid's construction and historical significance. This pyramid is notable for being the first colossal stone building in Egypt, marking a significant evolution in pyramid construction. Built during the Third Dynasty for Pharaoh Djoser by his architect Imhotep, who is often credited as the first known architect in history, the pyramid consists of six mastaba-like structures stacked on top of each other, each decreasing in size as they ascend, giving it its distinctive stepped appearance. Originally standing approximately 62 meters tall with a base measuring 109 meters by 121 meters, the pyramid has slightly reduced in height over time due to erosion. The core of the pyramid is made from rough, small limestone blocks, while the outer casing was constructed from fine Tura limestone, which gave the pyramid a smooth, bright appearance. This construction represents a significant technological advancement from earlier mud-brick mastabas to large-scale stone architecture. Beneath the pyramid lies a vast labyrinth of tunnels and chambers. The central burial chamber, located at the bottom of a 28-meter shaft, was constructed from granite and intended to house the sarcophagus of Pharaoh Djoser. The underground network includes more than five and a half kilometers of corridors designed to thwart grave robbers, with many passages decorated with blue faience tiles intended to imitate reed matting. Surrounding the pyramid is a massive limestone enclosure wall that measures 10 and a half meters high and encloses an area of about 15 hectares. This wall is punctuated by 14 gates, though only one of them is functional. Within the enclosure, there is a large courtyard known as the Heb Sed Court, used for the Heb Sed Festival, a jubilee celebration that renewed the king's reign and powers. Adjacent to the north side of the pyramid is the funerary temple, where rituals and offerings were made to honor the deceased pharaoh. A small sealed chamber called a serdab, located near the pyramid's north face, contains a life-sized statue of Djoser, with two small holes through which the statue could see the rituals performed in his honor. The Steppe Pyramid of Djoser is considered the earliest colossal stone structure in Egypt, and the first pyramid ever built, marking a revolutionary leap in architectural techniques. Imhotep, the architect of the pyramid, was later deified as a god of wisdom and medicine, with his contributions to architecture and medicine highly revered in later periods of Egyptian history. The Steppe Pyramid set the precedent for future pyramid construction in Egypt, influencing the design of smooth-sided pyramids like those found at Giza. The Heb Sed Court within the mortuary complex was used for a festival that renewed the pharaoh's power, celebrated after 30 years of a king's reign and every three years thereafter. The extensive subterranean network and the design of the pyramid itself were aimed at protecting the pharaoh's burial and deterring tomb robbers. Over the years, the pyramid and its complex have undergone extensive restoration efforts, 
particularly in the 20th and 21st centuries, to preserve this ancient monument for future generations. Both huge areas of the world that have never been looked at by archaeology at all. Or if looked at by archaeology, looked at only minimally. It's really important to understand that archaeology is often driven by accidental finds. Ancient structures with astronomical alignments fascinate historians, archaeologists and astronomers alike as they offer a glimpse into the sophisticated understanding of celestial movements by ancient civilizations. These structures, often monumental, not only served religious or cultural purposes but also acted as precise astronomical observatories, so we think. We think it makes more sense, take the geology, take the astronomy, this monument has its origins 12,000 years ago. The majestic pyramids of Giza have stood on the Giza Plateau, near Cairo, Egypt, for millennia, captivating us not just with their monumental architecture, but also with the mysteries of their celestial alignments. These ancient marvels, which include the towering Great Pyramid of Khufu, the Pyramid of Khafre, and the smaller Pyramid of Menkora, along with the enigmatic Great Sphinx and several smaller Queen's Pyramids, represent a pinnacle of ancient engineering and astronomical precision. And that astronomical connection to the stars at that time says to me, we cannot divorce the ancient Egyptians from the Great Pyramid. It's fascinating to think that the Great Pyramid, with its original height of 146.6 meters, held the title of the tallest man-made structure for over 3,800 years, constructed from an estimated 2.3 million blocks of stone. What really piques curiosity is the precision with which these pyramids are aligned to the cardinal points of the compass. The Great Pyramid's slight deviation from true north by just 3 60th of a degree is a testament to the ancient Egyptians' advanced knowledge of astronomy. They achieved this using the stars, particularly the circumpolar stars, which they deemed imperishable. Even more intriguing is the Orion correlation theory, which suggests the pyramid's layout mirrors the stars in Orion's belt. This celestial mapping not only connects the earthly to the divine, but also underscores the pharaoh's intended journey to join the gods in the afterlife. The ancient Egyptians' belief in an afterlife where the pharaoh, as a deity, would join the sun god Ra in his daily journey across the sky and through the underworld at night is reflected in the orientation and text of the pyramids. These were not merely tombs, but served as stairways to heaven, ensuring the pharaoh's soul could ascend to the stars. The alignment with Orion's belt, associated with Osiris, the god of the afterlife, rebirth and rejuvenation, further cements the pyramid's role in this divine narrative. That, that is who Osiris is. His image is seen in the sky as the constellation of, of Orion. Drawing a parallel, the ancient Mesoamerican city of Teotihuacan showcases similar astronomical knowledge and architectural grandeur. The main structures at Teotihuacan, notably the Pyramid of the Sun, the Pyramid of the Moon and the Temple of the Feathered Serpent also reflect celestial bodies, echoing the pyramids of Giza's connection with the cosmos. This shared inclination towards understanding and integrating celestial phenomena into architecture highlights a universal human desire to connect with the universe, a theme that transcends time, culture and geography. The stories these ancient structures tell of humanity's quest to understand the cosmos and our place within it continue to fascinate and inspire. Through their enduring legacy, the pyramids of Giza showcase the ancient Egyptians' remarkable achievements in architecture and astronomy. Continuing our journey through ancient marvels that blend architectural genius with celestial precision, let's turn our gaze to Chichen Itza. This UNESCO World Heritage Site in the Yucatan Peninsula is a dazzling testament to the Maya Toltec civilization flourishing from the 7th to the 10th century AD. Among its many wonders, the Temple of Kukulkan, or El Castillo, stands out as a symbol of the Mayans' advanced understanding of astronomy and their calendar system. El Castillo is not just any pyramid, it's a four-sided structure with 91 steps on each side and one additional step at the top, totaling 365 steps. This clever design mirrors the solar year, encapsulating the Mayas' profound connection with time itself. But the marvels don't stop there. During the equinoxes, a play of light and shadow creates the illusion of a serpent slithering down the pyramid, culminating in a stone sculpture of a serpent's head at the base. This phenomenon draws crowds from around the world, eager to witness the ancient Maya's ability to encode astronomical events into their architecture. 
The descent of this serpent symbolizes the return of Kukulkan, a deity associated with fertility and agriculture. This event likely signaled critical times for planting or harvesting, weaving the cosmos directly into the fabric of daily life and spiritual belief. But the pyramid's mysteries include auditory wonders as well. Claps at the base echo in a way that mimics the sacred Quetzal bird's chirp, perhaps intended to evoke the voice of Kukulkan during rituals. Looking beyond Chichen Itza, we find parallels in the ancient world that resonate with its astronomical sophistication. Machu Picchu, perched high in the Peruvian Andes, shares this celestial alignment, though it reflects the Incan mastery over the landscape and the heavens. Here, structures align with solstices, and the Intihuatana stone serves as an astronomical clock, much like El Castillo's alignments mark the equinoxes. Both Chichen Itza and Machu Picchu stand as testaments to their civilization's astronomical knowledge and architectural prowess. They remind us of the universal human desire to understand and integrate the cosmos into our lives, a theme as old as civilization itself. Through their enduring legacy, these ancient sites continue to captivate and inspire, offering glimpses into a time when the sky was a map, a clock, and a canvas to align our creations with the stars. Diving deeper into our exploration of ancient sites that masterfully intertwine architecture with celestial phenomena, let's venture to the Emerald Isle, where Newgrange stands as a preeminent beacon of prehistoric culture. This Neolithic marvel predating Stonehenge and the pyramids of Egypt was constructed around 3200 BC. Its architectural and astronomical precision speaks volumes about the ingenuity of its creators, revealing a sophisticated understanding of the cosmos that challenges our perceptions of ancient societies. At the heart of Newgrange is a massive circular mound sprawling across about an acre with a diameter of approximately 85 meters and a height of 13.5 meters. This structure houses a long passage stretching about 19 meters into the mound, leading to a cruciform chamber. The chamber's corbelled roof, still waterproof after millennia, stands as a testament to the remarkable skill of its builders. Yet the true genius of Newgrange lies in its astronomical alignment. Each year during the winter solstice, sunlight streams through the roof box above the entrance, bathing the inner chamber in light for about 17 minutes. This stunning phenomenon underscores a profound connection with the solar calendar, illuminating the builder's deep astronomical knowledge. The purpose and symbolism behind Newgrange's alignment with the winter solstice have been subjects of fascination. Many believe it symbolized the rebirth of the sun, marking a period of renewal and rejuvenation. This alignment may have also represented a time when the veil between the living and the dead was at its thinnest, facilitating communication with the ancestors or deities. The discovery of human bones and grave goods within suggests that Newgrange served as a sacred space for burial or ancestor worship, playing a significant role in ceremonies related to life, death, and the cycles of nature. Drawing an intriguing parallel, let's consider Gobekli Tepe in present-day Turkey, a site that predates Newgrange by several millennia. It's going to require us to reconsider uh, our whole dating sequence on megalithic sites. Known as the world's oldest temple complex, Gobekli Tepe's massive stone pillars arranged in circles and adorned with intricate carvings suggest an early form of star worship or an attempt to mark significant celestial events. Despite the vast differences in age and cultural background, both Newgrange and Gobekli Tepe exhibit advanced architectural techniques and a keen understanding of astronomical phenomena. Their construction not only served practical or ritualistic purposes, but also symbolized a deeper connection between the earthly realm and the cosmos. The spiritual and ceremonial significance of both sites likely made them focal points for gatherings and rituals, marking them as places where the community could engage with the divine. These ancient structures, through their enduring presence and the mysteries they hold, continue to draw us in, offering a window into the minds of those who built them and a reminder of humanity's eternal fascination with the stars and the natural cycles that govern life on Earth.